everyone, it's Lena here. Welcome to my garden. June has gone by so quickly. As a matter of fact, I think 2022 has gone by quite quickly. Today is June 30th and we're already halfway into 2022. June is also my favorite month in the garden because of all of these beautiful roses that have been blooming. So I've been super happy. Today I'd like to dedicate this video to roses that add a feel of sweet innocence, romance, maybe young love to our garden. So namely roses that are the colors of soft pink, pale pink, shell pink, true pink, and anywhere in between. I have several of these roses in my garden. Majority of them are from David Austin. So we're gonna take a look at roses that I have in my garden first. The rest of the video are going to be roses from a rose garden in Tacoma, which is not far from where I live. So we're gonna start with this one next to me here. This is Emily Bronte. Emily Bronte is such a beautiful shade of pink with like very subtle hints of soft apricot in the center and the fragrance of this rose is absolutely amazing so divine I wish you could smell it with me I've had this rose for about four months uh, as a bare root uh, I ordered it as a bare root in March and planted it in March and today is June 30th so roughly four months it's put out a bunch of blooms and a lot of buds and right now it is standing at I would say maybe three feet uh, such a beautiful and healthy rose let's take a look at Emily Bronte up close Emily Bronte is such a beautiful rose it's, uh, it's got very nice put together rosette a lovely color it has more of like a little like kind of like an open bloom kind of like a water lily so which makes the flowers look even bigger than they actually are I think and um, the stems are really strong and they are able to hold the flowers upright like this so four month old she is about I would say about two and a half three three feet tall um, she's put out a lot of buds and a lot of blooms it's really gorgeous some of the blooms are whiter than others I think as they mature um, they turn a little bit whiter um, as they get ready to fall off the stems like this one for example and the blooms stay on for a couple of days actually um, quite long longer than a lot of other roses that I have um, like the, these blooms I've I think I saw them for the first time this past weekend today is already uh, Thursday so it's been four days I think they would make really beautiful cut flowers as well or even for weddings and things gorgeous Emily Bronte all right, uh, next rose that I have is uh, also a David Austin, and it is a climbing rose. Um, this is a uh, Bathsheba. I'm including Bathsheba here, even though this is an orange, kind of like a, it's supposed to be an orange rose, but um, from what I have, my specific one, um, it is it has a lot of pinks in it i think like apricot a hue and coral just very soft pink and i'm including this rose in this video too because i think it really adds a feel of you know like sweet romance and innocence in the garden so that's Bathsheba. also got this as a bare root uh planted at the same time as emily bronte uh, in march also another one also a climber and this is strawberry hill also a david austin this one is uh kind of like a true pink tone um roses is small to medium size maybe uh three three and a half inches in diameter gorgeous too looks to be a very healthy rose it's supposed to be about 8 to 10 feet tall I think my fence is only 6 feet but we'll see so 
So that's Strawberry Hill. And then over here in this brand new uh, border or bed that I created uh, earlier in February, um, this one is Eustachia V. Eustachia V is gorgeous. It's a little bit brighter pink uh, compared to um, Emily Bronte, but I think the form of the blooms are similar in that it's a little open, kind of like a water lily. So the flowers look very, very large um, from the front. And it's got a very uh, like subtle, uh, like, you know, hint of apricot in the center. Take a look at this one. Absolutely gorgeous too. And you know I gotta admit, I haven't smelled this rose yet. Oh, smells so good. Quite fruity. So this is Eustachia V. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Oh my goodness, I love this rose. Super vigorous growing. So uh, same time I got them in March uh, as a bare root and right now uh, This one is probably the largest of all the bare roots that I've got. It's about three and a half feet tall and it's put out a ton of blooms a ton of buds So very very healthy and very very beautiful And this one you guys I wish I had blooms to show you this is a uh, Hmm, what is the name? I know it is a pink rose. As a matter of fact, I have the tag still on here. Let me see. The Ancient Mariner. Ah, okay. This is a, also from David Austin. Um, the Ancient Mariner also, will also have a very beautiful uh, soft pink or to true pink blooms. Um, I'm going to show you. I'm going to steal a picture from David Austin's website um, to show you what Ancient Mariner's blooms look like. And so, these are some of the soft pink to true pink roses that I've got here. Um, I have one more in the front of my garden, so let's walk over there. And that one is going to be called uh, Harlow Carr. Oh, before we get to Harlow Carr, I have Olivia Rose Austin, which is another uh, pink rose that is super gorgeous. She just finished her first flush though, so um, no bloom to show. But I have footage of her when she was in bloom, and I'll show you here in a second. Gorgeous, soft pink rose. Alright, another David Austin rose that I'd like to show you that is true pink is this one here. This is Harlow Carr. Harlow Carr has uh, kind of a smaller blooms compared to uh, the other roses that I just showed you. Uh, blooms are about two, two and a half inches in width. But the color is absolutely lovely. Harlow Carr used to be in a container for me and I had to move it because it's super thorny. So right now it's sitting um, in my front yard, kind of away from the walkway. And so that's a better spot. It's not blooming as vigorously this year because it just got transplanted, I think. So I think it's suffering from a little bit of transplant shock. But Harlow Carr is another beautiful rose. I have not smelled it this year. So let me take a quick sniff. Mm, very lovely. I think it smells better this year compared to last year's. All right, so that's our little car. Let's walk back inside. Well, I actually wasn't going to include this one on the list because it's supposed to be a white rose. So this is Desdemona, but um, I have uh, more pinks than whites uh, with this rose. 
So as you can see, some of the roses are white and some of them are more pink than others. Like very, very subtle shade of pink, like this one here. Also, maybe like take a look at these right here. I hope you could see that there. So as you can see, so it's mostly white, I think, but it's, uh, it's got quite a lot of pinks in there too. And this is another very romantic rose. It's, it's got a cup-shaped or like a chalice-shaped bloom. Um, so the flowers don't look very big, but um, it's got quite a lot of petals um, on the inside. Smells absolutely divine. This rose has probably the strongest smell um, in terms of, you know, uh, fragrance uh, of all my roses. So I really, really love this rose, Desdemona. All right, and the last rose from my garden that I'd like to show you is going to be this one right here. And this is not from David Austin. Um, I don't know what company this is from actually. I, I brought this rose from Costco. This is uh, Le Petit Prince. And Le Petit Prince is uh, kind of like a pink lavender uh, color uh, to the blooms. Here, I'll, I'll let you see for yourself. Let's take a closer look at that. It's got a large, large bloom, like measured up to four, four, five inches easily across. So that, got some more blooms there. And this is a, I think this is a hybrid tea a rose. And, and I can tell in the way it blooms, like it's got only one rose uh, in a single stem uh, mostly. And uh, the stems are pretty sturdy. Take a look at those. This is a large, large shrub. Uh, my fence is six feet tall and these guys are, this is their second year's growth and they're already like five, five and a half feet. Um, so I'm probably gonna have to uh, do quite a bit of trimming at the end of the season or early next season. So we'll see. All right, those are some of the soft pink to true pink roses that I have in my garden. Next, let's go and take a look at some more pink roses at a rose garden in Tacoma near where I live.
before this when gardening hadn't fully become a hobby of mine I didn't really quite get it when people said that roses were the queen of flowers now that I have a garden and I'm growing my own roses I fully understand why I hope everybody enjoyed our little video today on these beautiful romantic roses that add a feel of romance and innocence to the garden happy gardening everybody bye